So welcome everybody to the open offer release of the Cadre platform, which stands for the Collaborative Archive and Data Research Environment. So today we're gonna illustrate the project itself with two uh, interactive demos. Uh, each of those will take about half an hour. So please follow through us. If you have any questions, feel free uh, to ask through the chat or if you wanna talk, you can unmute yourself. In the end, I will showcase a little bit, previewing a little bit what's coming up for the Cadre platform, exciting stuff. A few links that you might find useful in today's demo. A lot of these materials you can find in our uh, Carpentry website. We want to thank Institute for Museum and Library Science for support this grant. Also, our data providers, including Web of Science and Microsoft Research. Without further ado, uh, we would like to invite our uh, tech director and project co-director, Val, uh, to talk more about what Cadre is about. Thank you, Sharon. My name is Valentin Penchev. I go by Val, and I'm the IT director of the uh, Uni Network Science Institute and one of the co-directors of the Cadre project. The Cadre project itself was a collaborative effort from a very diverse group of people, drawing on merit from all of these folks. We are led by a librarian, Jamie Wittenberg. Next to her is Patty Mabry, former executive director of the IO Network Science Institute, now part of uh, Held Partners in Minnesota. Yours truly, Shaoran, and at the end, last but not least, Rob Van Rennes, our representative from the Big Ten Academic Alliance. We also have the support of the Big Ten Academic Alliance, Health Partners, the IEU Pervasive Institute, to which we owe a huge gratitude for some big enterprise on-premises hardware systems. Three out of the four big data innovation hubs, the fourth one is about to join us in the second iteration. Microsoft Research and Clarivet, formerly Clarivet, now the Web of Science Group, who are responsible uh, for two of the data sets, and most of the Big Ten as part of the Big Ten Academic Alliance. This list is incomplete. We'll be joined by two more, bringing the count to 10 of the Big Ten institutions who are supporting the project and who are pledging their support for a few more years uh, beyond the scope of the grant. Here is the problem we're trying to address. The idea that libraries are struggling to, do, to get sustainable access to standardized, licensed, and large and unwieldy data sets. It's cost prohibitive for the small ones. It's really resource exhaustive for the big ones, which results in many researchers who are trying to work with scientometric and infometric research not being able to get their hands on the data they so desire. Also, a lot of those researchers are lacking the programming skills and the huge labs of graduate students and postdocs to make possible for them to work with the big data sets. So we designed Cadre. It's a cloud-based cloud solution and it provides a secure environment for licensed as well as open data sets. I'll speak a little bit further for the federated uh, authentication system that lets us present resources to those who have access to them. But with the help of the Big Ten and the vendors, we're also able to have a free tier for everyone else who's not part of these institutions. And although they may not be able to access some of the licensed data sets, there is a plethora of free ones like the Microsoft Academic Graph, like the US Patent Data, which are access to everyone. It offers a graphical user interface. It offers standardized formats for most of the data. It offers computational resources, which are part of the cloud framework and available to everyone, including the, the free tier. And it uh, includes a space to share and store files as, uh, as well as byproducts of research, assign uh, unique identifiers, DOIs, and create packages that can be easily published and then traced back to their origins. 
few words about AYUNI, since I represent it. Uh, we are a unique startup institution inside a well-established Indiana University. Website behind me, ayuni.iu.edu. We are a cross-campus interdisciplinary institute. We are started intentionally outside of any school. We don't have a dean. We do not issue degrees and we don't have any student programs. What we do is we try to work with anyone on campus and beyond to strengthen the theories and methods, analytical tools about network science and network research, but also to foster collaborative interdisciplinary <coughs> work. That's what cadre mostly fits into. There are two teams other than the administration, the IT team, which you see uh, pictures here, and also the research team comprised of research scientists of whom Sharon Yan and Felipe Silva are two bright shining examples. The project goals. As an IT person, we usually stand accused of building new shiny toys and inviting researchers to follow. So this time we took the other approach by communicating to everyone before we started building the framework. We had a product owner council that means at least twice a year to guide us and we collected user stories from everyone that became at one point fellows and now moving to uh, users of the program to figure out what their goals are and what their expectations of a program in a platform like this. And we find three different groups of people. Informatics, computer science researchers, people who really know what a Spark cluster can do for them and we have it there for you. We have a Spark cluster, it's here on premises. We have few Spark clusters through Databricks you can spin in the cloud. We can give you access to the raw data, we can give you access to API, and you can easily, as, show, as uh, Philippe and Matthew show, will show you in a minute, spin up your own uh, Python or R notebook and do most of the work your hearts desire. Then we have other community, the science of science community, whose computer skills are not to the point of the previous ones. To them, we have a plethora of databases, graph databases and relational databases, coupled with few own native cloud technologies, which allow them to span uh, almost linearly based on the research needs. For everyone else, there is a web query building interface, which makes it simple to create those queries but also suggest the best underlying technology based on uh, the query that the researcher sends to the system. Here is the proper technology used in the raw data access, XML, JSON, CSV. We do not control this. This is the way data comes from the vendor. You have technologies like USQL, Athena, and other cloud network technologies that you can use directly on the platform. You can also use the distributed clusters that we offer on premises or in cloud. For the database access, a few of the RDS team are here. We were collaborating with them for about six months to try to find and benchmark the best databases for each individual query. Those are mostly graph, uh, triple store, and relational databases, and they will all be used in various degrees to make sure that your queries are answered uh, as fast as possible and the web interface. The query building, the ability to select from uh, all the data sources we have, for the first time the ability to select uh, and run queries on multiple data sources like Microsoft Web of Science and uh, like Microsoft Academic Graph and Web of Science combined and derive your results with exclusive user control that can always override the system suggestions if you think you know better. And finally, the crown jewel of cadre in my mind the research asset commons or also our new marketplace through the federated login we outsource the login authentication to each individual institution or for the free tier uh, freely available services like google login facebook microsoft and so on based on that we know what access your institution has to, com to complete and proprietary data sets once you start running your queries, once you start running your tools in the platform, uh, you can save the derivative results in the research asset commons. You can just use this as a safe storage to continue your work. You can share it with your peers, with your group, with your university. You can share it with everyone if the 
uh, the access allows. And we control for that. On the reproducibility and replicability, we use containers on the back end and assign or will assign soon unique identifiers at every step, which allows you to build packages with your tools and data. This will allow people to reproduce and replicate exactly the research you publish, just with a link that goes back to Cadre. But we'll do one more. It will allow people to use their own data with your tools, or will you allow people to try their own tools with your data, assuming they have access to do so. This is how Cadre looks like. There were some uh, animations on these slides, which I removed just prior to this meeting. They were first cheesy. And second, I'm not sure they would explain this uh, as well as the next few presentations can. Starting from left to right, you see the authentication, which connects to uh, every major authentication provider like Shibboleth, InCommon, and so on, and federates the resources of the big major universities. Here is the research asset commons, which you'll be able to see from Matthew and Philippi's presentations and all the different tools, or at least a subset of them, oh, this is a tip screen, uh, a subset of them that people are able to use. The web interface, followed by all the different tools we are currently building ourselves, and I hope by the next presentation to have an open API so you guys can continue to build the platform based on your needs and continue to contribute those modular plugins to our system. And on the left side, you see the main three uh, data stores. Mostly everything a unit does, we store in three different formats. One is in its raw format, which is available for people uh, to query with their own tools. We try to place this in uh, a database, trying to find the best technology possible. And whenever available, we can also use local resources to send this to the individual institutions. Okay, this is all from me. I will hand the mic to Matt Hutchinson, who will start the first hands-on demo of the first ever alpha public release of Cadre. Hello. So let me just adjust the lapel mic. Okay, hopefully, is that picking me up? Can you all hear me here in the room and on Zoom? Sound good? Great. All right, well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Cadre. If this is your first time using the platform, uh, welcome back. You've been following our development over the last six months or so. Uh, my name is Matt Hutchinson, and I'm the data manager of uh, the IU Network Science Institute and part of the um, IT team, which is putting together Cadre and the Cadre platform. Uh, so I'm going to take you through a demo. Uh, we're going to use the system. Uh, you're welcome to follow along. Everything should be provided for you if you'd like to follow these in instructions. And I will show you some of the uh, basic functionality of Cadre and some of the new features we've added uh, since the last time we did one of these demos uh, a few months ago. So let me exit the presentation here. And then, oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> There we go. All right, so this is our Cadre Hem. Oh, well, here, I'll start from our website here. So you may have seen this, I'm sure, in your, as you've anticipated this presentation, you've been reading through all of the material on the uh, cadre.iu.edu website. You can find out everything you need to know about the system. So from here, if you'd like to follow the Get Started link, I should link you through to cadre.iu.edu slash gateway. Now, for those of you who've seen the uh, system before, this is the first big change we have. First of all, it's a, a new URL than we've used previously. But from now on, the goal is to make this uh, system always available. So if you've worked with our previous system, some of our, our fellows who may have used the older version will know sometimes it may have been not available or we may have been making changes uh, for a while. I think we had a GIF of a construction worker telling you things were being uh, <laughs> modified. Uh, but from now on, this uh, site will always be accessible and, uh, and available for use. Now it'll continue to evolve and change over time. We want to continue adding features, and I'll, I'll talk about some of those and our plans as I go through uh, the system, uh, go through the presentation. Uh, but this uh, uh, platform should, from now on, be available for research. So I'm going to log in. I'm going to log in using my um, 
institutional ID uh, rather than my Google ID uh, if you are part of a Big Ten university or one of our partner organizations and you use your um, institutional login, you'll get access to both the Microsoft data and the Web of Science data. Oh, I should also say um, I've learned during these presentations that I cannot talk and type at the same time, so you have to be a little patient with me while I'm uh, filling out some of these forms. I'll just do my uh, two-factor authentication. I should be signed into the platform. So unfortunately, if you are outside of the Big Ten, you're using uh, your Google login uh, to access the system. You cannot use the uh, Web of Science data at the moment because that's a proprietary data set, but we do provide it to all of our Big Ten uh, affiliate, affiliates through the uh, platform here. So this is the dashboard. Uh, this is what you should see as you sign in. Um, as you can see, we have our little notification at the top here that we're going to continue uh, to improve this as we go along. Uh, and I'm going to start by uh, querying some of the data and exporting it to my working environment here in the cloud. <clears throat> I'm going to talk briefly about the data that we have available at the moment. As I mentioned, we have both the Microsoft Academic Graph and the Web of Science. Um, we've been focusing primarily on developing the platform, so the versions of the data haven't changed since the last time we presented it. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is what we're going to be working on over the next few months. Now we have a stable system on updating and, and keeping our data fresh, and hopefully we'll have a more regular update schedule. Um, uh, and this will be, a, I think, a, a useful improvement of the system. So if you're following along, we want to go to the query interface, and here you can choose which data set we want to query. So I'm going to start off with the Microsoft Academic Graph. So here you see our query building tool. And uh, relatively straightforward, we can go and just choose which field we want to search by and enter our text. So I'm going to look for all of the publications from the Journal, Journal of Informatics and uh, retrieve everything we have for that publication. So here we have all the different fields I can uh, select from. Uh, these are our default fields. You can see everything. I can select my output file from here. And uh, you'll see here we have our network queries uh, option. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so this section, for those of you who have seen our previous presentations, hasn't changed significantly since last time, but there has been a lot of work uh, being put into this uh, element. Uh, this component. Unfortunately, it isn't something we can really introduce incrementally. It's going to be kind of a, a big bang. We're going to have uh, a big expansion of the network functionality and visualization uh, tools over the next few months. And by the time we get to the Big Ten um, conference here in May, uh, here in Bloomington, we're going to be launching a lot of uh, a lot more exciting tools and uh, network search functions uh, here. So we'll get excited about that in the next few weeks or the next couple of months. Uh, and then Felipe will show you uh, some examples using our current network functionality, uh, but I'm going to move past that for now and focus on some of our uh, reproducibility functions. So I'm going to preview the data. This is probably the most exciting part of the demo is our little spinning logo. Um, the only downside is that our queries are so fast you don't have enough time to appreciate it. But uh, so here you see a preview of the data set. So this is, is uh, the first few rows of what would be the CSV file that I would export into my environment. So I can use this and then continue to refine it to get to exactly the data that I want, or I'll go back and, and make changes to my query. So for the example I'm using, uh, I'm only interested in two fields. I want the IDs of the paper, and I want the year in which they were published in this journal. So I'm just going to filter it down to two columns. I can check. There you go. There's the great logo again. Uh, and so this is the data set that I want. So I've got my unique identifiers for papers, and I've got the year the paper was published. So now I'm going to submit this and retrieve the full set. I'm going to give it a name so I know what the file is. This is another feature we've added recently uh, to help you sort through your various results. I'll submit that query. And then we can click through to the job status and see how it's going. So this is the query I ran just now. Um, you'll see there's some others I was doing earlier today. Um, I'm pleading you to see how long it takes two seconds to retrieve all the data for us. Uh, and then I can follow the job you know, with the name here that I entered. You notice also all of the uh, files that you create will get a unique identifier. Um, it's kind of a big string here, uh, which can be, you know, if you find it helpful, but uh, 
the main goal is that we don't, so you don't have name conflicts. You see, like I have, yeah, I've named two files the same thing, but we have these unique IDs as well to avoid that. Uh, so now we need to find out where our results are. So we want to go through to our Jupyter Notebook. Now, if this is your first time using the platform, if you're following along, uh, you'll probably see, uh, I forget what the message is here, that you don't have a notebook running. You should have a button here which says to start the notebook. Um, and it takes, what, about 30 seconds to a minute for your notebook to start. So you just, just follow um, what I'm doing and you'll see it change to green and you can follow the link here and go to the notebook environment. So this is a Jupyter notebook, as you may be, may be familiar with it if you've worked with Python before. Uh, you should see, it should look just like this. This is your first time if you're following what I'm doing. Everyone should have this alpha demo code folder, and that's the, uh, that contains all the files that we're going to use for our uh, demonstrations today. So everything you need should be in there. And then if you run the query as I did, or you run your own query, um, you'll have a query results folder. And then here you'll see the file we just created um, through our query through the interface. And you can look at it here. And you'll see it's the, uh, the name I entered followed by that unique uh, ID. And so I can see I have the same data here. So now I have my result set. I want to do something with it. So I'm going to move this. For simplicity, I'm going to move my data. You can use whatever, you know, either copy data or a set file pass, however you like. But I'm going to simply move a copy of this into my working directory to simplify things. Uh, so within here, we have demo one and demo two. So demo one is the one I'm doing. And then Felipe will take over and do demo two. So I'm going to paste in my file here. And I'm going to rename it so I don't have to type this long uh, string and simply call it Magneto. There we go. All right, so now I can close that one. So you should see this notebook file if you're following what I'm doing. So this is a Python notebook and it's intended, you know, this is a very simple, uh, straightforward script, which I've put together just for this demonstration. Um, and obviously you can write whatever sort of complex analysis and, uh, and uh, research that you want to do in the Python notebook and Felipe is going to show us some more of that complexity. But just so to simplify this process of showing you uh, what we can do, we have a very straightforward task here. I can load my library as well. You can see the output here. Then with this line, I'm reading my maginfo file into my environment and refresh. And so now I have this file in my Python environment and start programming and, and start doing whatever I want. So I'm going to run through a couple of simple things here, which are going to reshape some of the data and just to make sure I get the same output as you. So now I've grouped the data by year. So I just got a count of every paper published in each year from this journal. So I've aggregated my result set and I'm going to plot it. Oh, um, I don't know if we can. I can maybe hide this. Is that kind of move it out the way? And if there a way I can make it more full screen. So we're getting a question online about how best to uh, represent this. People are missing the bottom of the presentation here. There we go. Okay. Uh, All right. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Let us know if that's better. Hopefully you can see the bottom of the screen here. I'll try and keep it in mind though and keep everything further up. <laughs> All right. So then I'm going to output <clears throat> a plot here. It's a very simple plot just by year how many publications uh, I have in my result set. And then I can save this result to a PNG file, which should show up over here. There we go. Now I have my result file. Uh, so this is obviously a very simplified example, as I was saying, but hopefully you, you follow the logic of what I'm trying to do and uh, I can show you my workflow. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So I think everything um, I've showed you so far should be familiar to people who have seen the system before. Now I'm going to start uh, showing you some of the new features we've been implementing to facilitate uh, reproducibility and sharing of uh, work and re results through the system. So let's assume that you know, this notebook I've put together, I think it's really great. I really like this plot and I want to reuse this code. You know, I want to have it available so I can reuse it in another environment or share it with a colleague or just publish it out to everybody on the platform so I can show everybody how great my, my work has been and other people can find what I've been doing and working on. Um, so in order to do that, I need to take my uh, notebook and convert it into a package, or well, first a tool, and then we'll turn it into a package. So that's the process I'm gonna walk you through now. So there's a second file here. You'll see, uh, you should see if you're following along in the, the demo zero one, 
uh, in this path, the uh, Femo, Feb Demo 02. So you'll notice this is a Python file, not a Python notebook. Um, right now, the easiest, well, I find the easiest way to create a, a tool is to use a Python file, a .py extension. You can do it from a notebook, um, but I say it can be, a, it, I mean, just a personal preference. Uh, so you'll see it looks different, obviously, than a notebook, but the code content is relatively similar. You know, all of this is the same reshaping of the data, creating the plot that we saw in the notebook here. The biggest difference you'll see are the input and output uh, directories. Uh, we've added some text here, so you're welcome to use this as a template if you're creating your own um, uh, tool, if you want to create your own reproducible uh, uh, script. Uh, but you'll see here we have different file locations. Uh, so you can't necessarily write in just, you know, in my home directory, grab this CSV, and we'll see more as we walk through why we use these different uh, locations. But the nice, you know, the advantage is that for every tool you create, the file path for the input file and the outputs should all be consistent between them. <clears throat> uh, then have my, you know, calling my function down here, which I've defined in this system. So now I have my generalizable piece of code. I want to publish it on the platform uh, in a way that other people can use it. So just remembering using this tool, let me go back to my dashboard here. So we can scroll down. Uh, we'll see we have some packages here, uh, which have been created by um, us, by our team. Uh, but we're going to move further down to uh, my packages. You see, I don't have any packages or tools or archive data at the moment. And that's what we're going to do next. Uh, so if you are following, you'll want to go to this section of your dashboard and find the Create New Tool section. And so we're going to convert our Python code into a, a tool which can be uh, stored and shared. So I'm going to give my tool a name. Uh, what should we call it? Now, obviously, if you want to keep this or you want to share it, you're going to want to make this name and as explicit as you want as you can, so you can uh, keep track of everything you're creating. There we go. Part for February demo, and you know, same too with your description. Uh, you'll obviously want to make your description probably much more detailed than I'm going to give it today. Uh, so I'm just going to say plots. Um, there we go. So you see, now I select the files that I want to include in this tool. So this is the, this file browser will take you through to your local system. So you'll see here's our demo code library. Uh, here are our query results files. Uh, so for a tool, we don't include any data. We just want to include the code itself. Let me grab my .py file here. Oh, and one thing I should mention is we also want our requirements file. Let me open that and show you. So requirements.txt is a relatively simple file, but if you include any library, any Python libraries that you want to, or that you will need to rerun the code, that somebody else would need to rerun the code, you'll want to include a requirements.txt file listing which libraries should be included. You see, they should li yeah, match up with the ones we have here. And you're creating your own example. So my entry point file, uh, in my example, is very simple because I just have one file, my one .py file, but you can include as many you know, as you need, as long as you specify which is the entry point. And then my requirements file, again, has the same file path, requirements.txt. Uh, then I don't need to install anything additionally. I'm going to you know, do the import for the libraries, but uh, you can include here if you need to explicitly install any additional uh, software or packages. And that can create a new tool. Let's go through. And so we can see the status of the tool creation, same as when we were doing the query. Um, you'll notice the tool creation takes a little bit longer. Uh, you see, I ran it earlier today, it was 49 seconds. And that's because we're creating a Docker container, which is going to include everything uh, that you wanted to include, or everything that's needed to produce the tool, and then sharing that to uh, Docker Hub so it can be accessible. Uh, so I see it's auto refreshing. And uh, just give it another 10 seconds. It doesn't. Ten seconds doesn't sound like a long time until you're giving a presentation. And any second now, it'll be ready for us to use on the platform. <clears throat> See, it's slowed down since there must be so many people are using our system and joining in with the demo today. It's taking a few seconds longer than it did before. So I nervously click the refresh button, but it'll be ready in just a minute. Well, 
Yeah, <laughs> good point. Now's a good time if you have any questions while we're waiting on this to uh, finish here. Uh, feel free to ask. Uh, yes, your question in the room. Yes. So the question was, uh, the paper ID I was showing in the example, is that something we've uh, added to the system or does that come with the data? That paper ID is from the Microsoft data set. Um, so we receive the data at Microsoft Academic Craft directly from Microsoft. And so that is the ID system that they use um, in their data. We also, as Val mentioned, we have raw copies of the data on our server. Um, so if you feel you, know, you want to compare your results back to the original data, you know, let us know. We can allow you to access our, our system. We, uh, we do maintain um, a relational version of the database, which can be accessed directly on our on-premises server. Uh, here at IU, ah, there we go. Uh, and we have been over the last few months while this cloud system was being developed, allowing researchers to use that system. Uh, and it, obviously it still exists. It has both the Web of Science and the Microsoft data in a Postgres database. Uh, so if you'd also like to use that, um, you can get in touch with us and we can set up accounts uh, there for you to use it. We try to keep the data, at least on those systems, as close to the original format and use original IDs and systems like that so it can be reproducible so you can find the same results between copies of the data. All right, so our tool is completed. So now we can see it down here. Here's my tool existing on the platform. So now this is going to be persistent in my environment. <clears throat> but uh, what I want to do now is convert my tool into a package, which means taking the, uh, the tool contains all of the code and um, libraries and everything like that. But a package contains everything from the tool plus some data which the tool can run against. And so someone else using your package doesn't need to add any data. They don't need to do anything. They just hit the button and they'll get the same results uh, as you had previously. Whereas a tool can be modified, you know, shared and modified and adapted and used against data decided, you know, chosen by the user. Uh, so in order to create a package, we're going to need some more data to include. Uh, just to show you how we can use a tool with different data sets, I'm going to run another query with the web of science, get some data from there, and then we'll wrap, bundle that with the package we developed on the, using Microsoft data. Now, at this point, if you aren't, aren't part of a, a Big Ten uh, Institute, which is part of the Cadre project, I'm afraid you won't be able to follow this exact part, uh, but I'll let you know when you can jump back in and you'll still be able to follow us to the final, in the final section. You just won't be able to run this query. You'll have to use the original data set. So back to the query, build it. Now you see we're in the web of science query and I'm going to use the same journal and get the same uh, data set, um, but from the Web of Science. And then we should be able to produce the same uh, plot, the same PNG file using our tool and the data from Web of Science as we did using our original code and the, uh, the data from the Microsoft Academic Graph. So here's our preview. Uh, and we want to read the author name. And so you see here again, we have the IDs from the Web of Science itself. So you should be able to match all of this back to the, uh, the Web of Science data set. And I'll call this one loss info. Submit the query. And I'll check on it. There you go. Ah, instantaneous results in zero seconds. Uh, and so if, if we want, we can go back and, and uh, look at our query results. We should see it in there. Yep. We have the file in place there. So now I want to add that data, so add the file we just produced to my tool to create a package. So my, uh, whatever analysis I do can be automatically reproduced by anybody who's curious about what I've been doing. So to create a package, first I've got to give it a name. Um, what did I call the last one? Plot for Feb. Let's call it package for There we go. Very original. Um, so that's the name of my package. Now, what I need to do now is archive the data. So that is, I need to take the, right now, the, the CSV I produced for my query exists in my own working environment. And so I have to copy it over to an environment where it can be accessed by the package so that anybody running the package can access the file. Um, hopefully it's a straightforward process and it shouldn't be, you, know, you don't need to worry too much as a user about the internals of what's going on, but it's just a step that right now you'll have to do, uh, have to go through this form to uh, construct the package. So, um, oops. 
And uh, same as when we were building the tool, we want to go and select the file. And so I'll just get the original query results. I don't need to copy this one kind of thing, as I was doing before. Show my archive. And then you see it pops up. Then you can add additional files if you've written code, which takes multiple inputs, then you can continue adding uh, additional archives uh, to your package. As you see, the tool is available, some other tools that we have. Um, this is the one that I'm working from. And again, here, you know, you're going to want to give a very as detailed a description as you think would be useful for somebody else who wants to use your package so they can understand exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, I will just say plot There you go. So don't give it a description like this. Give it something that actually tells people what it does. All right. Now my package is ready. There you go. So <clears throat> I, uh, now I can pretend, pretend I'm somebody else and I've found this package and I want to, uh, to recreate the results that my colleague or, or somebody else has, has published on the Cadre platform. All I need to do, hit the run button. There you go. And the package is run in my environment. So I can go back to my notebook and my home directory. You see now I have a new directory called packages. And in here is the package that I ran. And you'll see we have input files, which is the, the CSV. I have the tools, which is the, uh, the code, the, the Python file and the requirements. And keep our fingers crossed, have the output file. There we go. So now we've created the plot with the weather science data. So we've been able to take all of our code we developed, publish it as a package alongside some data, and make it accessible uh, for anybody who wants to, uh, to reproduce the work that I was doing. Now, I should add a caveat here that at this point, uh, all your packages and tools will, have, uh, will remain private on your dashboard. Uh, they aren't being shared, but you can't share them currently. This is something we'll be working on. Uh, this will be the next feature we implement, uh, but it gives you some time to get familiar with the platform, start exploring the data, and build some really great packages, which so you can be ready on day one of the sharing to show off your work. Uh, so we have time for you know, some competition to build where everyone can get in build the best possible package they can think of, and then we'll be ready to see who can come up with the best one on the day that we implement that, uh, that sharing feature. Uh, but that's the ultimate goal, so that you, know, you can take your work and, and either share it with your team, your colleagues, or share it with everybody and, uh, and show off your work uh, across the Cadre platform. So I think that's everything for me. Unless there's any immediate questions, I'll hand it over to Felipe, who's going to show us some more advanced analysis and visualization using the Cadre platform. So, thank you. Thank you. Hello, testing? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me just. So, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I am Philippe Silva, and uh, I am a research scientist at IUNI. And uh, I am most like a, I can, I can be considered like a, a network scientist in some sense. So, I will show uh, how to use all these tools. Uh, on a natural science perspective, but uh, in a way that can also be used by people that doesn't really uh, need, uh, it's like a, uh, not much about natural science, but can at least get some results and data using natural science methods. So I just demonstrate that. And uh, for that we need to have, um, you, you need to have a, a tab in your browser with a Jupyter notebook that uh, it's, it should be open there. And then, oh, okay. Okay, how do I, okay. And uh, you, you may also need a link, uh, another tab for the cadre uh, gateway. So to go back to the initial page, you just need to click on cadre here or just type that URL and you should be fine. So to start my demo, I will, uh, 
to start my demo, I will uh, start from a uh, query, but now instead of just getting uh, uh, results from, from metadata, from the paper, paper's metadata, we are going to use all the citation. So to build some kind of citation networks from that. And to do that, uh, for now, this demo only works on MAG, but uh, in future, of course, we are going to adapt it to work on Web of Science as well. So use, please use a Microsoft Academic Graph. And let's just start doing um, a query. So the query I will be using will be a Journal of Informatics, and I will be adding uh, another, papers from another journal that's uh, Scientometrics. Uh, let's see if you ever see. So here you have all the fields with metadata from articles, but then uh, as I meant to show, uh, there is another field here that's network queries. That's exactly what we need. So uh, make sure that you uh, enable it. And let's get a preview just to see if everything's all right. Okay, yes, it looks, looks fine. You have Journal of Informatics and Scientometric journals, uh, papers here. And let's give a name to that. So let's try, uh, uh, it's MAG, Psi, and then uh, if you can give any name to that, just for us to, to keep the record of it. Okay. So now we have a, a, a new job and it should take a few seconds to run. Um, <clears throat> of course, now it's getting uh, not only metadata from articles, but also the, the citation network. And this, uh, yeah, it doesn't take that long. So uh, make sure, so you have a, uh, the, it's done. So let's go to uh, the, the results will appear on your Jupyter notebook. So let's go back to the Jupyter notebook and you see now there's uh, query results here and uh, or new, three new files appear. So this corresponds the, the, the one with three TSV, CSV files appear. So one of them is just the, like, exactly the metadata that you could uh, obtain normally querying for, for data. And the other two are network related. So one specifies the nodes. So you have some nodes information, including paper ID and other several kinds of information. This will be, uh, uh, we will be able in future to select uh, some fields on that as well. And then you also have uh, the edges. So the edges are in the, in, are like citing and then the cited papers. And these IDs are the, currently they are MAG AD ID. So now you have everything to build your own network. But just to make sure that everyone is on the same, uh, on the same uh, using the same data and the same query for our demo, let's go back to Cadre Gateway. And let's use one package that we just made with pre-built data so everyone can use the same data to try. So let's go to marketplace. And then you see in marketplace, there's a data package. This is uh, made by us uh, and uh, you can run it. You should run it. Okay. And uh, oh, it, it doesn't take that long. So the results should be on your notebook. So go to your notebook now. And you see on the fo there's a, uh, a folder package there. And now you see another folder, a new folder there that's demo to data package. And from there you can open it and you see output files and input files. So let's go to output files and then data. This just contains uh, the data that we may need, we will need for our demo. This, this could be obtained from the query, which is just to like to standardize so everyone will start with the same data. So let's go back and uh, uh, now you should open alpha demo code, demo two, and then part one. This is a notebook that I prepare. And uh, 
I will be using uh, some network tools to do some, some kind of analysis on the network. But let's just start with some, uh, uh, so it is just initialization. So you can start running uh, the, each field, each cell of the notebook. And the second cell is already uh, generating a network. And this network is, uh, you can see some, uh, this is a citation network. So uh, the connections means a citation and uh, each node is a paper. And you will now have uh, average degree, number of vertices, number of edges, everything here. There's some uh, simple properties from that. And the, the, the other cell uh, is more uh, <clears throat> just uh, showing the properties that are available for that for each paper, like a uh, paper ID, year, and then uh, publish, publication year, uh, paper abstract, title, etc. So now we have, uh, like you can see, you see that we have title, we have paper abstracts. We can start doing something very simple that's not network based, but we can, we can improve that a little bit later. So it's just creating a word cloud of the abstracts and titles that we have. And uh, this is doing exactly that. It takes some time, a few seconds. Okay, so now this, uh, you remember that I started from uh, informatics and scientometrics, uh, papers published on two, to, those two journals. It didn't make sense, they, they, they are really anal analyzing. Uh, so the keywords make sense, journal, paper, publication, you also have resource, field, you should have citation somewhere, indicator, researcher, yeah. So you have some uh, strong uh, keywords for that field. And um, now we can do, re we can start really doing some uh, uh, network. And let's, let me just uh, run this new cell here. This is just uh, showing the time span of the network. And uh, another thing that we may be interested in is uh, getting only the main connect, the major connected component. This is an example for that. <clears throat> you can see now that is uh, from almost uh, 7,000 nodes. Now we have only uh, 6,000 nodes on the, on the major connected component. Another thing that uh, we can do is uh, uh, obtaining uh, really the community structure. So community structure, for those that doesn't know, is uh, like uh, nodes that are more connected among themselves than nodes, than, in, like they, they form is groups of connections in those networks, so you can understand that it has uh, communities and that there are methods based on network science, network, uh, network uh, theory that uh, can be used to detect these communities. In this case, our network has uh, 18 communities. And now uh, we can save that structure so we can use it later. So it's saving to a file here. You can. I feel like you can go back here and then I'm not sure where it's saving, it's network. So let's go to alpha demo. Now you see another folder and then you have uh, another file here. And uh, this is just a network structure in which you have edges and uh, the vertices and the other information about this. So let me go back to, note to the notebook and let's uh, now, well, another thing that we may be interested in doing is uh, filtering this data. So we like to just have, for instance, data from 2000 and, and forward, and uh, just the most important nodes, papers, we can use, for instance, KCore to get those and filtering those uh, uh, with uh, a KCore that uh, is, is lower than one. This is just a way to filter networks. There are many other ways. It's just uh, exemplification now. By filtering, we have almost uh, uh, 2,000 2, nodes now. And from that, we can do visualization. Let's see how, that, how, is, how this network looks like. It should take just a few seconds, yeah. So the colors here are 
uh, represent communities. So you can, you can see the, the community structure. This is a very simple visualization algorithm, but it's, it, it, sh it should be an out for some, some tasks. Uh, another thing that now, now we have this kind of visualization, but we don't know exactly what each group is. So one, one way to really try to start understanding these groups is uh, by looking uh, at, the, at the keywords or the articles that are there. And uh, by, we can do that. We already, have, we already have a word cloud. So let's apply a word cloud for each one of these communities so we can have a, some kind of a overall uh, understanding of this structure. <coughs> And um, this is just initialization, and the last cell just creates the, takes a few seconds again, but it should create, should create the uh, word cloud. So now you have a word cloud here, in fact, four word clouds, each one corresponding to a, to a, so this one sec, oh, yeah. Let me just put this in a window here. So we can see how's the visualization. So, <clears throat> yeah, okay. So now the colors correspond to the communities. Uh, they, they match the, the same colors in the visualization. So you can see like uh, this, this community that corresponds to that one. And uh, it's more like a uh, in, in citation impact factor. And you have other like this uh, orange one that should be that vision. It's more like collaboration, co-authorship, networks, and you can go so you you can go on, on that. So, just just an example of analysis that we can do uh, by inside the notebook. Of course, you can do a lot more than that. But this is just a small demo. <clears throat> but uh, now we have all this kind of pipeline. So, uh, oh, by the way, any, any questions? Any questions so far? It's fine? Okay, so you continue. Uh, <clears throat> so you have a, now this kind of a pipeline in which that produces uh, the network and then word cloud, visualization, and then uh, another word clouds for each community. Uh, maybe you like to, 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 to have this published somewhere. So uh, and in a way that someone could replicate all your findings, all your, uh, generate all your uh, figures again and uh, intermediary data, things like that. So the package can house delivery data in, in that sense and can be used for reproducibility. So if we go back to Cadre uh, Gateway and then go to Marketplace, you see there is another package that we, uh, we, we have there. Uh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Oh, the first one, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> this, this package uh, generates the same is, uh, it, it generates the same image and the same, it, it has a, a similar script as our notebook, but it generates the same uh, image, the same, uh, word clouds, so let's try it and run. You can run it from there. It should take a few seconds. It is it's really processing the data again. So you can, and then you go, can go back to your notebook. Okay. Uh, you see now that every time that you run a package, it, the results will show up on the package folder and you can go to now to the package, to the uh, folder with the same name as the package, output files, <coughs> and you see uh, it's, uh, this may take a while to generate all the files. So, but you see like intermediary uh, uh, data, like the network here. Oh, let me close that. Okay, here you can also see uh, the word cloud, you can see the uh, visualization. The visualization can, can, be, can, can be a little bit uh, different because every time that visualization runs, it generates 
like a new uh, a new visualization. There are ways to fix these parameters, so it, it will always generate the same. So you don't have this implemented yet. And then there were the clouds for each community. So, uh, but something that will be interesting to do is to also apply the same pipeline, but to other data. So let's do this. But before that, do you have any questions? Any questions? Okay, I will continue then. So let me go back to, uh, to the gateway, sorry, okay. And then to marketplace. And you see Bell, that's, uh, there's a set of tools here. And one of them is this demo to public. And the idea is that you can now create a new package, but now using other kind of data. So to start that, let's create, let's create a new query with other type of data so that uh, we can use that uh, tool. Um, now let's try, for instance, uh, nature physics. So it's going to get our results from uh, our papers published in nature physics. We just need these fields, it's fine. Remember to include natural queries. Let's get a preview of that. Yeah, it seems to be working fine. You have nature physics. So let's do like um, MAG, uh, let's name it uh, MAG nature physics. Oh. And submit the query. Okay, it's running. And if you have any more, que any question, just any, yeah well it's done so you know you should have this uh, you can go back to your notebook just to make sure and uh, query results and you see that uh, three new files were generated just a few seconds ago. So they are here. So you should, this includes uh, the new, the, the data that uh, you just query now. So let me go back. Oh, let me close everything here. Oh, let's... okay, just one second for this. Okay, let's go back to the marketplace. And now that we have our data there, Let's create a tool. Let's create a package from a tool. So we have already this demo to public. That's just the same pipeline that I have in the notebook or a very similar one. And uh, let's give a name to that package. So you remember we search for nature physics uh, network. Okay. And from here, you can create an archive from the data you have. You uh, let's, but for, for, for working with networks and uh, exclusively for that pipeline, we need both the edges and the nodes. And we can do that. Let's name it uh, Nature Physics Network Nodes. And let's select the one with nodes in the name, create a new archive. Okay, done. And we always need the edges. So let's edges, name it with edges and uh, go to query results and then choose the one with uh, edges in the name. Okay, done. And uh, make sure that uh, the two is correct here. So it should uh, be, you, you should use demo to public and then, uh, yeah, it should be, it should work. Create a new package. Okay. Now let's go to, oh, now you have a new package here. You can just run it. It should take a few more seconds. Oh, that's fast. Okay. Uh, another result should start to appear in your notebook. So let's go back to the notebook. For now, the notebook will be the place for you to look for the files and results. 
uh, in future, uh, probably uh, an interface for getting this data would be implemented. Uh, so now you have, a, a, again, you need to go to package folder and then to, uh, you, you see now there's the results of nature physics network will be here and the output files and uh, it's, 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 it, it, this is being populated. It, it takes some time to synchronize the files. So you can see there's a network file here and uh, we can already see a word cloud. And uh, this is for nature physics and the related, uh, yeah, this is for nature physics. You shall see now, how's, uh, yeah, the, net, the network visualization is done. It's, it's like, it's very different from the one that we have for uh, the other query. And we shall also have uh, uh, communities, communities for that, uh, uh, the, the word cloud for each community on that network. So you have the same results, but uh, the same pipeline applied to another data. So, okay, that, that concludes the, uh, <clears throat> that part of uh, basic analysis on, on network, uh, using network data from, from queries. But uh, we are also, we have some experimental uh, demo in which, which is, uh, uh, we like to, for instance, do some kind of uh, visualization, interactive visualization of this kind of network, or other, you may do any other kind of more advanced uh, analysis on this. And uh, it is, you, you can go to alpha demo code and then to demo two and then to part two. And from there you see it's another notebook. It's now, uh, uh, loads data that was generated or it loads directly the network files. And uh, this is just, uh, this is uh, something that we are implemented that's uh, interactive visualization that can be used inside the notebook and probably uh, outside of it. So it could be used in a web interface as well. And you see now, let me try to, uh, to reduce the scale of that a little bit. Yeah, I think it's fine. So hopefully, hopefully you, you are seeing, yes. Uh, okay, let me just, yeah. So you now have a network and the, this is now a, a time evolving version of the network. And you can see like, this is the same, the, this, is, this is obtained for the informatics, uh, scientometrics uh, papers. And you can see it evolving over time and uh, you can interact with it. Uh, it's a little bit slow on this computer. This is starts to depend, this is a visualization that's uh, running on your browser. So it may, it depends on the power of your computer right now. Uh, but uh, you now have access to like visualizations, interactive visualizations on that. And, and you can move the slider to choose the year in which you like to see. The, and uh, uh, for future, we also have a, a ex very experimental version that's in 3D. And uh, you can see the same network, but now in 3D. So you can change some parameters, it's interactive. Okay. And uh, you also have the same communities now. You can play around that later, but uh, this is still experimental, so we are developing these tools, so it will be available as soon as they are ready. <laughs> okay, that, that concludes my demo and the uh, network-based demo, so I'm getting back to Val, Sharon, okay. By the way, sorry, uh, any questions yeah. regarding that? Time, so feel free to ask questions if you have any.
Thank you, Flippy, for the wonderful demonstration. Uh, that's what I mean by uh, if you want to compete for the best package when we make the publication functionality live, uh, you have a tough competitor right here. So we are ahead of the time. If you have any questions, uh, we are happy to ask, answer. Uh, yes, right now there's no such way that we can do that. But in the future, we intend to uh, hide the uh, the details of how do you build the packages uh, and how you publish the packages uh, on our platform from the user. So the princip in principle, if it runs in your notebook, it should run on our platform. So that's a plan, but we are not there yet. <laughs> So, yeah, the question was, how much resources does each user have on our platform? So right now, uh, since we're just releasing the alpha, we have no idea, to be honest. Uh, the one you're using, the notebook, has, uh, I think, one virtual CPUs and two gigabytes of memory. Uh, they may scale up to four gigabytes of memory, I think. Uh, we will tune these parameters based on the user's statistics we observe. And uh, the hope is we want to provide as much as free service as we can afford, but unfortunately, some of these more intensive features might be reserved for a uh, paid tier, uh, just for sustainability uh, purposes. But at this point, we don't have idea, so. In the back end, it's, we, are, we are running a uh, distributed cluster that auto scaled up and down uh, to support you guys' uh, code running environments. So the idea is that by Grouping all the users of these universities, we have more collect collective bargaining power and we can better uh, distribute the cloud resources over a uh, long period of time. So everybody gets, with, gets a cheaper deal, essentially. So that's the philosophy behind uh, the, the platform, the uh, economic upscales. <laughs> Any more questions? We also intend in the future to, uh, I think we have some questions in the chat. Okay, yeah. So yeah, we intend to make all errors visible from the notebook environment if you want to debug. Uh, if it runs in notebook but not runs on our uh, uh, platform, uh, it's our responsibility to fix that. Uh, so uh, try to hide as much as these technical details from our user to make it life, your life easier. Because I think uh, as a researcher, uh, making your code and your data reproducible is already quite cumbersome task. So uh, part of a country's uh, goal is to make that easier for everybody. All right, I'll, I'll try to f wrap up the, uh, oops. I guess it's not working anymore. Let me try to use, uh, okay, this should work now. Okay. So I'll wrap up today's demo if there's no more questions. <sighs> So I'll talk a little bit more what's going to be happening for Cadre platform in 2020. So in today's demo, we demonstrated the different components of the platform, including how can you access the data, how you can uh, easily query the data uh, and analyze the results in our platform. Also the system to help you reproduce whatever you have done on our platform. So that made up as, so we recently released a series of uh, blog posts about the five pillars of Cadre, and that covers access, data, reproducibility, and uh, empowerment. But a big component we haven't talked about today is the community. Because for, for this platform to really uh, survive and prosper, we really need everybody's uh, participation. 
and Val introduced some of the tech, uh, tech team members. We also uh, has a team of outreach and collaborative teams, two of those who presented it today, but we also have our project coordinator, Lotus, and our outreach coordinator, uh, Stephanie. Uh, so building the community is a big part of Cadre, because as I said a moment ago, the scale of econ economy of scale only works if everybody joins us. <laughs> Actually, the more they join us, the more power we have. So it's better for everybody. So a big component of this reproducibility package and marketplace is you guys, essentially. Uh, as the users uh, contribute to our ecosystem, it becomes more useful for everybody. So our country team builds the infrastructure, sort of the core components, uh, but it's really uh, the researchers like you uh, who are contributing and making your code, your data available and shareable uh, to others, make Cadre valuable. So we really would like to invite uh, anybody who has interest using our data set, uh, start thinking about uh, what you can do with us. And uh, our outreach team is ready to get in contact with you. So to facilitate that, we have planned a series of events that are gonna uh, happen later on. So today we have the alpha release. It's also the start, the for, first installment of the uh, webinar seminar series. Uh, we have eight now, I think, eight fellowship teams that's been working us closely uh, across the BTA uh, institutions. Uh, so they will be, I think, presenting their work. Those will be more research focused, unlike today, which is kind of more technical. Uh, tutorial style. And uh, we also invited our data providers, including Microsoft and uh, Web of Science Group. Uh, they might present their perspective in this series. Uh, in May, I think Matthew mentioned that we have another milestone we want to meet. And uh, right about the same time, we are organizing a workshop for all our researchers, the fellowship teams. So if you're interested, I think it should be open to uh, any participants. We are not decided yet, so it might happen with the uh, All Big Data Hubs meeting, uh, but stay tuned. Uh, we will be releasing the exact dates pretty soon. So the most, uh, I guess, uh, imminent coming up, like uh, recent schedule of this seminar series will be the fellowship projects. You can find more information on our website. Uh, so I think we're planning to have uh, our fellowship team from Ohio State University uh, be the first, because they intend to physically visit us. So we can expect them presenting similar, like I think right here uh, in a couple of months. They'll be talking about uh, rise of China as a scientific nation. Our uh, fellowship team from Michigan State University, who uh, eager, was eager to present at the Rome ISSI event, uh, is ready to present this time. So uh, they are likely to present by the end of April. Uh, we're still finalizing the, the date. Uh, they're studying the collaboration, the partnership in SDG, uh, means uh, Sustained Development Goals from the uh, United Nations project. <laughs> Also, uh, our, the team from Indiana University uh, is, will be, I think, third in row. So all the, of these teams have signed up for a future webinar series. So if you're interested in any of these topic, in this case, it's about eco-centric network citations. Uh, tune to our uh, media outlets. Uh, we will, Stephanie in particular, will keep you updated. Uh, and we hope to see you back here again. Uh, last but not least, we have a rough timeline for what country platform uh, will look like uh, later in this year. Uh, today is alpha release. Uh, we have a major database update coming end of May. And the uh, interface today, you saw it's kind of a room, kind of not well developed yet. So we aim to streamline this uh, as well. Uh, by the end of October, which is actually the end of the, our uh, ILMS grant, uh, we will have a persistent beta release. Uh, so 
right now, if you notice our small font in our uh, gateway, uh, there's notion of user data might not persist, but at that point, everything will be persist and we will keep promise data provenance and reproducibility after that. So if you've been using our dashboard and the gateway, there's also a little floating button if you haven't noticed. Uh, so that's where you can send your user feedback. So we've been working with our fellow teams closely about what they want, but the offer release is really about the broader audience. So if you have any feedback or any interesting use cases you want us to hear, to hear uh, click that button. <clears throat> I think that's all I have to say today. And thank you everybody for being with us. Here's the uh, links if you want to uh, review what we have done, demoed here today. And uh, thank you for being with us. <laughs> Any more questions? So just click that button uh, if you want to give us feedback. <laughs> So it should show up on any page when you are at the gateway. <laughs> and I think in the form, you can leave your email address if you want to be contacted by us. <laughs> so we do regularly uh, collect these user stories and they will be reflected if uh, we feel it's important. All right, this went pretty smoothly. I think our tech team over there is sweating a little bit, but uh, kudos to them. <laughs> Everything uh, works out. Uh, I think that's the end of the demo. Uh, keep in touch. Thanks, everybody. <clears throat>